Welcome to 2 Minutes Bio. In this video, we'll discuss the detailed procedure of Pasteur's experiment. As I mentioned in the last video, Pasteur's experiment was designed to refute the spontaneous generation, which was believed for a long time. More specifically, he used a special flask called the Swan Neck Flask to challenge this fallacious theory. Firstly, he prepared three normal flasks. Beforehand, there's a soup in three flasks. Since soup contains a lot of nutrients, if you leave it for a few days, many bacteria will grow and give off an unpleasant odor. At the beginning of the experiment, the bacteria already present inside are sterilized by heat. This allows us to convince that the bacteria detected after a few days were formed after the experiment started. The tip of the first flask is opened and it will be left as it is. The tip of the second flask is heated and bent twice. This is what we call a swan neck flask. The biggest feature of this flask is that nothing other than air can enter the flask. By allowing only air to enter and preventing the entrance of bacteria, he tried to overcome the weakness of Spallanzani's experiment. Please refer to the previous video for Spallanzani's experiment. Just like the second flask, he made third one a swan neck flask. However, after he heated the flask, he tilted the soup to allow contact with the outside. The result was as follows. Bacteria had grown in the first and third flask, but not in the second flask. Since all flasks were allowed to contact with air, this result suggests that life would not occur spontaneously, even in the presence of oxygen. There might be an argument that the swanic flask is a special structure to prevent new life forming, but because of the third flask, he also denies that the swanic flask is simply disturbing life forms. In this way, as a result of this experiment, Pasteur succeeded in almost completely denying the theory of spontaneous generation that has continued since BC.